So, uh, that's the title I've chosen to uh, kick this off with, is a, um, another challenging title. Um, we're looking at, uh, that's interesting, half the colour's gone. Because it, it was quite interesting, the, 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 what I'm looking at on my screen are a bunch of different kinds of bacteria, uh, where the, you actually got them stained with the gram stain, with the cocci basically holding the gram stain as, and, and blue, and the rods <laughs> being gram negative rods, which you can just about see up here. There's a gram negative rod. There are some vibrios over here, some spirochetes over here, but, <laughs> and some streptococci over here. I don't know why this hasn't come up on the screen. You can probably see it on your thing, but you can't see it on this. I can't see it on the screen. What's up? Pardon? That's something to do with that, or something, or I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, why have we got a problem? <laughs> now, this is one of the first statements of the problem that I'm going to be addressing this morning. Uh, it's President Barack Obama's State of the Union address. This thing is overexposing. Can you turn down the brightness, please, on the projector, sir? Sir, can you turn down the brightness on the projector? It's too bright. Sorry? Does anybody know how to turn the brightness down on the projector? There is there. That's the projector over there. That projector over there. You need to turn the brightness down. It's too bright. Okay. Now, the interesting thing here, and you can't read it because the projector's too bright, but you make it less bright. Ah. That's like... Contrast, try contrast. Brilliance, that, that one there. It's too high. Bring it down to about there. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right, now try, try contrast. Try this one. Because you should be able to read this at the back. You can? But, but it gets worse. <laughs> That's what I'm All right? No, not all right. I can hardly read it. Anyway, you'll notice that... Hey, that's it. Come on, yes. Very good, very good. There. Now then, uh, the, the interesting point about the why I put this particular slide in is because you'll notice it's President Barack Obama's State of the Union address January this year. January this year. Now, this is almost the first reportage of drug-resistant bacteria and whether it, and he says whether it's vaccines that stay ahead of drug-resistant bacteria or something else that we do research on that's okay but he mentions drug resistant that's the only mention and that's as far as he goes which is a pity some people say that you know now the president's in charge of it we can get it you're pushing against an open door guys but this is all there is in something like 26, 21 pages of speech, on page 6 you'll find those five words type of thing. So that's not really great stuff, but let's go on. So the next one that comes up is WHO. There's WHO, and this was on the 30th of... And this is now uh, April uh, 19, uh, 2014. And the paragraph... And the, this, this is a massive report of 20 or 30 pages. I don't know if many of you have read it, but it's all about a uh, global report on antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And the only real thing in it is this bit. And, and look what they say about it, which really drives me nuts. Uh, other important actions, um, preventing infections from happening in the first place through the belief in hygiene, better access to clean water, infection control in healthcare facilities, and vaccines to reduce the need for antibiotics. Da, 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 da at last. And that's about all there is in this 40-page report on this important business of uh, uh, looking at antibiotic resistance. And then we go on to our next slide, which is this. Now, this brings you almost up to date. This actually was science of last week. This was science of the 12th of September 2014. Last week, 10 days ago, all right? 
And they have a, a supplement in Science of Last Week, Global Health, What Works? And this goes for something like 48 pages. There's 48 pages of science, so it's a really big tome of science. And guess what? Well, there's one particular article in it, in it which is this article, Antibiotic Effectiveness, Balancing Conservation Against Innovation. So it's mainly looking at the antibiotic side of things. And this is the paragraph. There's one paragraph in this whole paper, in this whole 50-page supplement in science about vaccines. And this poor soul basically gets it all wrong anyway, uh, talking about, all right, that the healthcare workers aren't vaccinated to the extent to which they should be. And... Um, then they talk about staph aureus, the most common cause of uh, post-operative infection. And in recent trials of a vaccine, this is the V710 vaccine, which I looked up because it was reference 9. It was a JAMA article, a JAMA article. And basically, I think he did about 20 patients, and he showed that in, certainly in, in certain types of post-surgical situations, the V10 vaccine didn't work as well as it should have done, and in fact did cause some disease. But if you actually go into the literature and you look up whether the V10 vaccine for Staph aureus was any good or not, and I'll show you some papers later on, the vaccine is in fact effective, and it is effective in pre-surgical situations, uh, to prevent post-surgical infections for Staph aureus. So in point of fact, uh, th this is misleading in terms of vaccines, and, uh, and, and, and in fact, the whole issue of science. I felt like writing to the editor of science and really giving them a piece of my mind because they hadn't really accepted the real problem. And the real problems are very serious. I mean, this is antibiotic resistance sweeping the developing world. Could you focus the projector better, or is it my eyesight? Anyway. Um, and then there's another one on antibiotic resistance, uh, threats in the United States. You probably can't read this, but I'll read it to you, if I can read it. Uh, it says the significance... Uh, oh, no, nightmare bacteria uh, pose a, uh, a catastrophic threat to people um, in, in, in all countries of the world. And it talks about, you know, hundreds of thousands of cases of the disease, etc. And this was in, uh, let's see, what was this in? Oh, this was the CDC, the uh, Communicable Disease Center in America. So they come up, they, they say, fine, it's a tremendous problem, but do they do anything about it? Do they comment on it? Do they talk about vaccines? No, they don't. They talk only about messing about with antibiotics which I think is a bit sort of uh, dead in the water. And here's another couple of examples. Um, this lady here is, in fact, the head of the health service or research in, in the health service in the United Kingdom. Um, her name's Dallas, Dame Sally something or other. I forgot her name. But uh, in, in essence, this is in the Times, the, uh, the senior newspaper in May of this year. She's saying basically the same thing. Antibiotic resistance is going to cause all sorts of problems, but... Does she mention vaccines? I think she might mention it once. There. I can't read it on this thing anyway. But uh, I think she mentions vaccines once on in this particular occasion. Right. And uh, this, uh, to cu cup it up, this is the New York Times, the international version of the New York Times, and that says exactly the same thing. It talks about the rise of antibiotic resistance, and at the same time, hardly mentions the word vaccines at all. Now, I don't know why this is. Here are all these very senior things, CDC, WHO, and even Lancet published a, something like a 150-page article on uh, antibiotic resistance and things of this nature. Did they mention vaccines? Hardly at all. There was one paper at the end which I got a little bit of information, a couple of paragraphs. So, having said that in fact that uh, you know, everybody agrees it's a terrible thing, but nobody agrees that vaccines are basically the solution to it. Now, I believe vaccines are the solution to it. I don't believe that the things I'm going to tell you in a minute will basically come about or be any good or be, will be cost-free. So and I want you to think about why is it that vaccines have not been put in pride of place when dealing with this particular <coughs> emergency on the world scene. Why is it? What's holding this back? 
And uh, I've just put here just a listing um, of the various organisms that are uh, causing us problems from a, uh, from a bacterial resistance point of view. You've got tuberculosis, you've got staphylococcus, uh, intestinal problems, lung problems, kidney problems, you name it. Um, and, and the interesting thing, of course, is that uh, in, in the veterinary area, you've got salmonella comes into it as well, as does Campylobacter. Um, but the veterinary thing, you've got to bear in mind, 50% of antibiotic uses, the 50% of the total use of antibiotics is in the veterinary area. Are used as growth factors, as disease prevention things. If you prevent disease, you'll get better growth. So the veterinary people, you might say they have a lot to answer for, but they're only basically using 50% of the antibiotics. We're using the rest in terms of human antibiotics. So, now, uh, this is a very, there's a lot of stuff on this slide. And, um, uh, you know, and the, these are the conventional, this is what they're talking about. This is what these, the Lancet is full of, and WHO is full of, and you name it. They're all full of this, of this lot. Well, what is it? I mean, discover new antibiotics, all right. Pr control production, purchase, and use of antibiotics by the government in order to prevent overuse and therefore the development of resistance. Allow prices to reach market affordable levels. Combination therapies, uh, like the amoxicillin clavulanate uh, situation. Uh, optimize dosing levels, routes of administration. But you know all this. Protect non-target zones, i.e. the gut, because when you take an antibiotic, you completely disturb your gut flora, and your gut flora is important in actually giving you good health, as we learn, because now we have sort of fecal... Uh, uh, fecal transplants, i.e. Um, uh, transplants of feces um, orally uh, in order to be able to re-establish the correct kind of gut flora. So there's antibiotic, uh, adjuvants for antibiotics. Hey, you just thought anti adjuvants were, were sort of, you know, for the, the vaccine people. No way. Put them in for antibiotics. Human cell penetration, antiviral strategies, etc., etc. And this is a big one. Implement point-of-care diagnostics that are affordable and reliable and accurate. Now, what, what they're saying here is that if you can actually identify the organisms that are causing disease and do it accurately, you can then target the specific antibiotic for that particular microorganism. Now, that sounds great, but at the end of the day, you'll get resistance to that too. So, let's move on. This is getting to the point where we're saying that... Um, uh, which I'm making, which is this. This is the NIH funding for different conditions. This is the death rates in 2011, and this is the funding in 2013 in millions of dollars, okay? So you've got $10 billion is uh, sort of being spent in, in R&D to protect against the death of uh, one, about 1.1 1, 1 million people from these diseases. Now, you'll notice a couple of them are probably vaccine-oriented things, chronic respiratory disease and pneumonia and influenza. Kidney disease, to a lesser extent, it tends to be um, uh, operational issues with kidneys and things, dialysis. Uh, but let's look at it. So, that's 3.3% uh, of the spending is on chronic respiratory diseases. Again, 12.5% of the deaths. That's not even fair. I mean, you know, a kid of five years old will say that's not fair. Uh, and we look at the pneumonia and influenza, you've got 4% of the expenditure for 4 points. So now you might say, well, that's okay. But if you add them together, you've got basically, you've got something like about um, 12 and 8 is sort of 12, about 18% of deaths are being funded by 7% of expenditures on disease. That's not fair. You might also equate the pneumonia and influenza with chronic respiratory diseases, and I don't know why you don't, actually. I don't know why these are two categories. But so, in essence, these things are linkable. But it's a disproportionate expenditure in R&D, which is what I was saying in my first talk, is that we've got to spend a lot more of the resources of research and development in the area of vaccines and vaccination to the point where something like half of this expenditure, something like... Uh, uh, five, that's ten billion, five billion dollars should be spent, should be being spent looking after vaccines and vaccination. 
uh, and the use of them. And finally, in these final slides, I just want to say that what I'm arguing for when I argue for vaccines to prevent against these uh, diseases that are caused by antibiotic-resistant bacteria, I'm talking here about... Um, this one is for Staphylococcus aureus and the three papers here. This is the one I told you about first where the guy found a negative result. Uh, but on the other hand, these two papers indicate that there are positive results. This is a phase one. And this, I think, goes up to phase three. Um, uh, and, and there's a review of Staph aureus vaccines. But they're in the literature. You can find them for yourself. But it's not a hopeless case. It's not as if you can't make vaccines to these antibiotic resistance bacteria. You can. We just don't have enough of them far enough through the trial process to be able to sort of stand up and sort of you know, raise our head above the shoulders of the antibiotic resistance uh, people. Uh, this lot are all to do with tuberculosis, I believe, and it's the same story. This is tuberculosis vaccines. And again, much of the drug resistant, uh, the, the tubercle bacilli who are causing disease now are in fact multi-drug resistant. And so that in essence we've got to get much better vaccines and these vaccines are in the offing, they are in clinical trials. So, my first take home point is borrowing from President Obama of course, yes we can. But, as Churchill said during the last war, we'll beat the enemy if you give us the tools. And what are the tools? The funding. And as a result, we'll do the job. Okay, that's my message and that's my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Did you want a quick, one quick question? If anybody wants questions, I mean, I'm very happy to answer questions. Have I convinced you all that I'm right? That, let's, let's, let's sort that. Anybody think I'm barking up the wrong tree and that really we should be giving money to the antibiotic people? Yes. Great. I, I think you should also mention the abuse of antibiotics in agriculture. Well, that's what I did. I said uh, the, veterinary, the, the veterinary use. This yes. is the real problem because the antibiotics and all this thing can be reduced. 50%? The, yeah, yeah I mentioned the, the 50% of total antibiotic use is in the veterinary area. And then in, in hospital and all this thing, the so-called antibiotic uh, bacteria will also reduce. But uh, agriculture is a major problem because yeah. they're really yeah. causing the, all the problem. And then the, the cattle and everything have the antibiotic resistance. It's the unregulated use. Of course, you don't control it as well in the veterinary area as you do in the human area. You don't have to have a prescription in the same way.